This is the story of the Epiphany of Slocum Furlow. That is why the picture is called The Epiphany of Slocum Furlow. It's about his epiphany. You see, an epiphany is like a kind of philosophical experience in which you sort of realize your place in the universe. That is, well, the emotions are in there too, in general. Anyway, this is Slocum Furlow. Slocum is at college, a place where you do all sorts of things. There are times when you feel a bit lost at college. Slocum himself is beginning to feel a strange discomfort, an ineffable melt. Shut up! Your oh, shot. Oh, that's a leaner. That's a leaner. It is not a leaner. It's oh, mine. Oh, I win. No, oh, I win. I win. Come on, that's right up against the wall. Oh, come on, baby needs shoes. Larry's, Larry's. Uh, I go last. One on the end goes last. Are you kidding? Always on the end goes last. Your shot. Your shot. Okay. Here we go. Ah, ah, ah right in the crack. <laughs> the way I see it, no man is an island. But then, no island is a man either. I'm not sure. Oh, speak of the devil. Anything big coming up? Slocum, for an up-and-coming young man of your caliber... Shall we say a large bore? No. Nothing big? That's about the size of it. That's the enormity of it. Actually, you're pretty big, Slocum. Maybe that's why you don't... Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a small world. Go away.
Hello, Slocum. I've been wanting to meet you. It's not easy to meet people around here. The interesting people are hard to get to. And when you've been around here as long as I have, you get... How shall I say this? There are so many people here, Slocum. Yet in the midst of it all, it's easy to feel... lonely. I don't know how you feel about it, Slocum. But the way I feel is... It's hard to really get close. I don't mean to yourself. I mean to others. Others besides just yourself. It's easy to forget they're there. It's so easy to fill your time, but it's also trivial, like a puddle. Things seem meaningless, like the smell of books. But you look as though you do mean something, Slocum. More than the rest of them. There's being alone, and there's being alone. You know, different kinds. And when it's nice to be alone, that's the right kind. You know what I mean, don't you, Slocum? I knew you would. Am I talking too much? <laughs> you get your fill of words so quickly. Shall we go to dinner together? Another day, another dinner. If you can call it that. You can call it whatever you want, but that won't accomplish anything. This time, if it moves, I'm not going to eat but it. Eating here is always a moving experience. You mean physically or spiritually? Both. But is man single or dual? Um, both. Coffee, please. With cream? Yes. Oh, if we accept at a higher level, we reject viscerally. The food affects the mind, too. Darn right. I don't know if it's the flavor of the ingredients. Some kind of intellectual saltpeter they put in. The spirit soaks water for us at the table. That's why I can't keep my thoughts straight lately. Does that mean we think better if we stop eating? Yeah, but we'd only be able to think about food. Mind if I join you for coffee? Better watch out for that, too. Have a seat. Welcome. Hi. Do you think college food keeps us from thinking? I haven't thought about it. I don't know why I have to go through this. For the same reason it has to go through you. We've been discussing, Charlie, the stultifying effect of college food on higher mental function. It depends on the dessert. I think better when I eat. Do you, do you eat much, Slocum? If you ate enough, you'd be a genius. The trouble is it also puts me to sleep. You could have genius dreams. Do you ever think? No, but I sleep while I'm eating. That's the trouble is you never know to where your thoughts can lead. You never know where anything can lead. Slocum, I don't think... That's what life is. Uncertainty and separation. It's hard to see what leads where, or if you'll get back. Would anyone like me to get them some milk? Yes, I'll have some. Skim, skim. Fulfillment. I must have fulfillment. I may never get back. That's what I mean. 
We don't get back. We get cut off. Whatever we do cuts us off more and more. Well put, Slocum. We get too complicated. We get cut off from the warmth of our abstractions by the glibness of our sensitivity. You see a duality between subject and object. Well, of course, um, that's an undersimplification. There's really a unity of all these things, regardless of whichever is emphasized. The meaning is in the smell of books, as well as the verbatim. You've got to tune your nose to life. You may well ask, then, is man the human being, single or dual? That depends on whether we look from the top down or consider him from the ground up. From above, he is a unified whole, a socio-emotional unit from below, a poor, bare, forked animal. Honestly. Out of that fundamental split arise all hopes and come all problems. Stirring around in a world he never made, he seeks only truth and a little meaningful fun. Things look dark and abstruse, till all at once there comes a clarification bluey. <coughs> and after that, you can, that is, a new vantage point. Um, try forking yourself, Slocum. Um, um, sorry about the fork, fella. Hello, Snape. Slocum. What's the meaning of life? Of what? Of life. Life is a can of worms. Of what? A can of worms. You mean to eat? Only a fool <sighs> would eat a can of worms. Hi, Middleton. Hi. Well, just in time. Time for the game again. Time out. What if I go there? You can't. It leaves your dinosaur unprotected. Oh, my goodness. Wow! 
Slocum, what kind of trash you're eating now? Trash is relative. Absolutely. The trouble with your game is it's too detached from life. That's the whole point. Oh, it's hard enough to find reality as it is. I'm going to bed. But is reality enough? I don't know, Slocum. I prefer the real thing. Well, I hope you find reality. Yeah, before it finds you. There is no real thing. Dirty laundry. Now there's reality for you. One, two, three. Have you figured it out yet? Still working on it. Well... Slocum. Are you working? What is there worth working on? What about your studies? What is there worth studying? Yourself, Slocum. Hey, Middleton, quick, maybe you know, what's the, what's the meaning of life? Hurry. Meaning of what? Nothing. Oh, uh, whatever can be said about the spirit of an age is manifest among. We can only see from the evidence the exact state of society certainly has a bearing, which is really little more to, than to say that the whole literary movement is at least an outgrowth, more like a on the other hand, it would be well to consider that neither the relative nor the absolute viewpoint gives us meat enough for the actual critical discussion. In the second place, there is clearly doubt that any advocate of the alternative stand could plausibly advance the reciprocal view without entanglement in that group of problems which we have spent the last several weeks on. Unless we can suspend any temporary disbelief in order to examine, 
which the materialistic, not to say surreptitious attempt, would definitely. In any case, there is hardly doubt that under the circumstances, various qualifications <coughs> have. Hence, any of the heretofore intangible factors may conceivably stand forward. Mm. Or backward. Maybe I'd better go over that point again. <coughs> there is clearly, as we have seen, doubt that the alternative stand is completely, clearly without advocate. Yes? Uh, Dr. Malt, I'm just throwing this out. <coughs> but do you attribute the resurgence, or at least certain, that is, not specific factors as more or less contributory, uh, however the influence or reaction might be thought, or <laughs> tentatively, wherever they appear, if suddenly circumstances we feel That's that... That's ridiculous. <laughs> How can you possibly say that any of the problems have anything to do with it? This is no matter of metaphysics. This is life itself. I don't want to flout my religion in your faces. But unless it is realized that there is more in the universe than meets the eye, I think it's a lot of poo. Well, that's a good start. But don't you think you might be leaving something out? That is, there might be more to it. I don't see what you mean. Well, regarding the whole thing as a framework of relations constituting the universe of discourse, wouldn't you say, surely son, if not all. Well, Dr. Malt, I don't want to seem insufferable. Ever since the fall from the state of nature, that is, if you believe in the fall or the state of nature. Well, there is a state of nature. That is, nature exists. Uh, Watch out for that wall. But what makes it relevant? How do we know anything is relevant? Well, I guess that's a good point to rest on.
अस्लाकम I saw your ad on the bulletin board. I'll go for a walk with you. In the woods? Why not? Why indeed? I just flunked an hour exam and I need solace. Well, I'm about as solace as they get. Have you seen the trees lately? Well, why lately? Oh, hello, doggy. Eep! I think he means well. That can make it worse. Have you noticed the bugs on the trees? I'm not blind, you know. Those are terrifically soft. Sit down, it's great. Yes, it's soft. Slocum, what's the meaning of life? Well, it's all been said, actually. Man is born. He lives and stops, that's all. Actually, there's more. Trees are crowd. kind of person who really knew the meaning of life and you do you do Welcome, Perlo. This is your epiphany speaking. You see now that the meaning of life is in the relation of the whole to the parts. When everything is related together, then that is the real relation of how things are to what they can be. And that is, therefore, generally how things are when they are the best. And that 
is the meaning of life. Yes. What? I, I just had it. An epitome. An epiphany. What's that? Oh, nothing.